Psalms chapter 23. Psalms chapter 23. The 23rd Psalm, one of the most popular, probably for most of you, one of the first scriptures you memorized. A lot of times it's read at funerals. But I believe it's a psalm giving God praise about life and following the shepherd. Look over to your neighbor and ask this question. Say, neighbor, neighbor. who's your shepherd? Dear Heavenly Father, as we go into your word, we pray that you be the preacher and the teacher. My prayer, Lord, is that anyone that is struggling, anyone that's at a crossroads, that they'll hear your voice through your word. I pray that you'll have your way here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. In this 23rd Psalm that we know so well, David is comparing himself, comparing God to the shepherd. He's actually, as we're going to see further, he's, he's really talking about God the Son, Jesus. But David being a shepherd himself, he relates to God as a shepherd because he himself was a shepherd. And in this psalm, we're going to see, you know, I know we've read it so many times, but I just said, you know, the Lord put it upon my heart and I said, we're just going to dissect this verse by verse and see what the Lord is really saying. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, or I shall not be in need. If you're taking notes, just a few things, I didn't even bring notes up here with me, but I'm going to tell you this. The shepherd does, he provides love, the good shepherd, Jesus, we'll get to that a little later. He provides love, provision, protection, and direction. Love, provision, protection, and direction. And when he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not be in need. David is saying. Verse 2, he said, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me besides the still waters. He makes me to lie down. In other words, David, he, it, wasn't, it wasn't green pastures everywhere in Israel. <laughs> you had to go find it. So when they found green pastures, he had David would have the sheep to lay down to rest. And God wants us. He did us with the same way. The pastures that we, we glean to his word. He wants us to rest. But also, look at this in verse 2. Let's just dissect this a little more. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. This verse 2 right here separates activity from rest. He's, he's telling the rest in green pastures. But in that same verse, he leadeth me besides the still waters. I always wondered, you know, why David said this. He leads me besides the still waters. And from meditating on it, I see that this is also a warning. <laughs> oh, Lord. He leads me besides the still waters. It, it, 
What David is saying, he's talking about periods in life. There are periods in life, seasons in life, where things are just going smooth. Everything is calm. Your wife is acting right, the kids is acting right, the husband's acting right, the dog is acting right. Everything is going smooth. And yet, in that calm, we still need to follow the good shepherd. We can get lost in the calm. <laughs> you can get lost in the calm when things are going so well. No worries, nothing going on, everybody acting right. The Bible says here, he, he leads me besides the still watchers. The waters are still. There are no ripples or anything going. He doesn't say he leads me, because some, I know some commentators believe he's talking about he leads me to the still waters to drink and refresh. No. He leads me beside the still waters. You're, you're walking and following the shepherd. And the still waters, if you ever been by a pond, there's a pond by a house where I like to take sable. My wife and I. And sometimes the pond can get so calm, it gives off a reflection. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It gives off a reflection where when you're close to it, it reflects the land. And if you're not careful, if you're not paying attention, Clint, you can walk off into the water. He leads me besides the still waters when that time where it's calm, when things are just going too smooth, we still need to follow his lead. Yeah. Because if we're not, we, if things go on, we, just, we take our eyes off the shepherd and we can fall in the water. Yes. He leads me besides the still waters, the waters that are calm. And as we follow the leading of the shepherd, he makes sure we don't fall in the water. A period of rest and a period of activity. He restores my soul. Jay, that talked about last night, last week being renewed. But restored, the same thing. Things that we go through in life. When we go through it and on the job, dealing with people that don't want to even have anything to do with the Lord. And it tells dirty jokes. You know, things that we go through during the week, at times that we need to be restored. Yes. There are times that we need to be restored by God's Spirit. He leads me in the path of his right of righteousness for his name's sake. Do we really understand that, saints? Too many times we do good things and we like to take all the credit. But when God is our shepherd, every good thing that we do, we don't do it for our name. We do it for the name, for his name. Matter of fact, God leads us to do good things for his name's sake, not for our glory. He leads us and gives us to do good things for his name's sake. Not for our name's sake. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We sung about that earlier. And I thank God for the worship team bringing that out clearer. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In John chapter 10, verse 11, it speaks of Jesus as the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. As you can remember, when David was getting ready to fight Goliath, he was getting interviewed by King Saul. And Saul was like, man, you're too young for this. And, and David gave him his resume and said, listen, I would have fought off a lion and a bear. Now, a lion came and took one of my sheep and I went in after it. 
did not. Some of us probably would have been, oh, well, they would have went home and said, I'm sorry, Daddy, uh, one of the sheep, one of them bit the dust. <laughs> but David went after a lion and took the sheep out of his mouth. And, and, and right here, it, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What we need to remember when the David says this, what's so important about this verse is the sheep are going into danger. They sense they're going into danger. But they go anyway because <laughs> you ever remember uh, when you were little, you only had to be little. You ever remember when something you were walking around and you'd be outside a dark alley, you hear some noise and you're with your friends. What was that? I don't know. You want to go see? I don't know. You go. I ain't going to that. And then one person out of the bunch will say, I'll go. And then everybody else follows him. <laughs> y'all, come on now. Y'all have seen that happen before. Some of y'all was probably the ones said, I ain't going to that. <laughs> because you sense danger. The sheep, he said, he said in verse 4 again, yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't, David didn't choose to do this. He's talking about following the shepherd. So in other words, God, the good shepherd, may lead us into situations that seem dangerous. But we trust God enough to follow him anyway. He said, he's, Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, what the shepherd had was a staff. It had a hook on one end and like a club on the other. And he would use that crook to, to pull sheep that was, that was going astray. And he used that other end to defend off animals. And I believe that's how God is with us, because sometimes we stray. Sometimes we stray off the things that we have no business into. But Jesus in his love, he comes and rescues us out of the jaws of the lion. He comes and rescues us out of the jaws of the bear. In verse 5 it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What David is saying, you, you bless me, you preparest. He didn't say you prepared. You preparest. It's like an ongoing. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God, we don't have to toot our own horn. God wants to bless us in front of people that may not want to know God or choose not to know or whatever, but God wants us to, wants to bless us in front of our enemies. Not just to gloat, but to, to draw them. Verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house. How do you get in the house? First, you have to get through the door. In the same chapter, in John chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus says, I am the door. And by me, if any man enter in, he shall find, he shall be saved, and shall go out and find pasture. The door is Christ. Well, how do you get into the lock? The lock is the cross. Jesus Christ came to this earth to die for our sins, to die for your sins. He came to die. He came to suffer. He came to bleed. He came to suffer all the things, the stripes, all that for, for, for the glory of the Father. He did that 
that not for his glory, but the glory of the Father. He did that because he loves you and because he loves me. And when David says this, he says this with such resoluteness. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The thing is, no matter what happens, God wants you to stay in the house. He wants you to stay in the house. He wants you to have that resolute desire to stay in the house. He doesn't want you to stray. He'll go after you just like David did. He'll go after you, but he doesn't want you to leave the house. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This 23rd Psalm, we know so much. I, I believe we should rejoice that Jesus is our shepherd. And I believe that we should also take each verse into context and realize that when things are calm, we need to keep following him. And don't be surprised when he leads us into dangerous territory. Because it's all for his name's sake. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that you are the good shepherd. We thank you that you care for us in such a way that you go after us, that you provide for us, that you protect us, and that you correct us with your rod and your staff. My prayer today, Lord, is that we as a church always acknowledge and follow your leading. And that we acknowledge that you are our shepherd. And that we take the warnings seriously and not fall astray. We thank you. In Jesus' name.